What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily. So every year, Samsung does this thing where they release two phones with the same name. One's a 4G version, one's a 5G version, and there's like minor random differences between the two that wind up just causing more confusion than anything else. The two different phones are usually intended for different regions, different parts of the world. But over time, third-party retailers through Amazon and other outlets sell them both. And sometimes Samsung even sells them both, as was the case with previous A20-something devices and even the A13s last year. So that's why, in this video, I'm going to break down the differences between the A14 and the A14 5G, so you know exactly what you're getting with each phone, and most importantly, you be sure you're getting the right one. First off, when you're shopping around for either one of these A14s, you'll want to make sure you know what to look for. The regular A14 will either be called just A14 or A14 4G LTE. The A14 5G will literally say A14 5G in the listing title and it even says that on the box itself. Price-wise, no matter where in the world you are, generally speaking, the regular A14 or A14 4G LTE should be the cheaper device. It's retailing right now for around $140, while the A14 5G has a full retail price of $199. However, at least here in the US, the A14 5G is one of those phones that's often heavily discounted or even free with a new line from a major carrier. And I should also just say that the A14 5G is what you'll likely see being sold in store and online via Samsung if you do live in the US. For the rest of the world, the A14 4G LTE is going to be pretty prevalent. You may even see both phones being sold from the same places, so just pay attention to what you're looking at. And if you want to do some comparison shopping of your own, I'll leave links down below in the video description to where you can get both of these phones at their cheapest current prices. So unlike in years past, where phones like these would differ in size or design even slightly, these two A14s are actually completely identical. In fact, I think Samsung did use the exact same housing for both, just with different color options. They're both precisely 6.6 inch smartphones, corner to corner, that's their screen sizes. They both have a teardrop selfie camera and big black borders all around the screen with a very obvious thicker bottom chin. They have the exact same screen to body ratio. The only difference in the hand is in weight. The A14 5G is one whole gram heavier. That's it. Around back, if you look closely, you'll see they do in fact have the exact same rear cover as well with this very subtle lined texture. Same triple lens camera setup and flash, though different specs, and the same flat profile with a slightly curved and rounded edge. Both phones are made of plastic, neither is water resistant. They are unequivocally the exact same phone on the outside, front and back. All the various buttons and things are in the exact same place too. On the left side, both phones have dual SIM and SD card slots for expandable storage, though the regular A14, being primarily an international phone, is also dual SIM. They both can be configured with either 64 or 128 gigabytes of internal storage. On the right side, the same volume button placement and power button slash fingerprint sensor combo. I don't personally see any difference with unlocking speeds or accuracy. They seem to wake, scan my finger, and unlock the phone at essentially the same time. There's nothing at the top of either phone. On the bottom, the exact same headphone jack, USB-C port, and single speaker setup on both. The same selfie cameras up at the top as well. And around back, the triple lens cameras are, like I said, a little different, and I'll talk more about that in just a bit. So we know they're basically the exact same phones on the outside. Now let's talk about what is actually different. And really, there are quite a few important things that set these phones apart. Now the displays, for the most part, are pretty similar. They're both PLS LCD panels. They're both the full 2408 by 1080 resolution for around 400 pixels per inch. But the display on the A14 5G is a 90 hertz refresh rate display, while the regular A14 is just a 60 hertz panel. What that means is that your taps and scrolls and animations on screen should be faster and look more fluid on the A14 5G. And that's generally been the case in my experience. But what also helps that is is just the better internal specs inside the A14 5G. More on that in a moment. The overall viewing experience between the two phones, though, isn't that far off. They're both very much budget displays, so while they're plenty colorful,
colorful and sharp even at this size, they don't get very bright, and they suffer from a ton of glare. The regular A14, for whatever reason, might be a little brighter, but the difference is pretty insignificant. The only thing to consider here with the displays is really that 90 hertz option on the A14 5G. And while it's nice to have, I don't necessarily feel like that is the decision maker. What is the deciding factor though is the performance. In a nutshell, the regular A14 is a very slow and underpowered device compared to the A14 5G, which is one of the reasons why it's also quite a bit cheaper. Inside, the regular A14 will have either a MediaTek Helio G80 processor or the Exynos 850 and four or six gigs of RAM. The A14 5G gets either the Exynos 1330 or MediaTek Dimensity 700 and four, six or eight gigs of RAM. My A14 actually has the Exynos 850, the A14 5G has the MediaTek. They both have four gigs of RAM. Here are the Geekbench scores if you wanna just see some performance numbers to compare. But once you start playing around with these phones, you'll quickly realize just how slow and clunky the regular A14 actually is. Both these phones run One UI Core, which is something to keep in mind, but nowadays there isn't much of a difference between that and the full Samsung One UI experience. They both have been updated to Android 13, which is cool, but you can see with these side-by-side -side speed tests that the regular A14 just struggles to do even the most basic of tasks. And that's super frustrating. It's one thing to opt for a non-5G capable chipset in the non-5G phone to save some money or or whatever the case may be. But it's another thing to toss in a really, really slow set of internals that negatively impacts general usability. I don't personally see how using the regular A14 would ever be a good move, even if you did get it for 40 or $50 cheaper than the A14 5G. The overall user experience just is significantly worse by comparison. Now these phones actually do get the same size battery inside, which totally makes sense since physically they're the same size and build anyway. They're both 5,000 milliamp batteries. They both charge up at up to 15 watt wired speeds, no wireless charging, and they both don't come with a proper wall plug in the box. So that's a bummer. And I'll say one more thing about longevity. In my experience so far, because the A14 5G has a newer, better, and more efficient processor powering it, with the same battery size, it's been lasting longer than the regular A14 by usually an extra 10 or 15% off of similar usage. That may be another factor as well. Finally, when it comes to the camera setups, this is actually kind of bizarre. So you'd think up to this point that the A14 5G would have the better camera setup, but that's not entirely the case. Perhaps Samsung felt the need to save some money somewhere, and this is what they decided on. The main camera lenses seem to be about the same 50 megapixel shooters. They both have two megapixel macro lenses for up close pictures, but the regular A14 has the super valuable five megapixel ultra wide lens, while the A14 5G has just a depth sensor as its third lens. I personally would prefer a wide angle lens myself, so one point for the regular A14 there. They have seemingly the same selfie cameras, by the way, both 13 megapixel lenses up front. And inside the camera app, while a lot of the functions and features are the same, the A14 5G makes up some ground with night mode, hyperlapse, and video stabilization extras that the regular A14 didn't get. So it's sort of a weird back and forth. Neither phone can shoot 4K video, but again, randomly, the regular A14 can utilize a high megapixel mode with its 50 megapixel lens, while the A14 5G doesn't seem to have that option. When it comes to the actual pictures though, the winner is much more obvious here. The A14 5G snaps a better shot every time even with the same hardware, the rear lenses and the selfie lenses. And that's because it's just the more powerful phone, so it can process the images far better. There's way more detail in every shot, more accurate color. They're both budget phones for sure, so the pictures aren't that great, but the A14 5G at least finishes strong with the better real world results. All in all, it's pretty clear that the A14 5G is the better device. And I don't think that should come as a surprise necessarily, but it is interesting to see in what ways that it is actually better. You wouldn't know it just by looking at them, but the A14 5G has the 90 hertz screen, the far better processor, better optimized battery life, noticeably better picture taking abilities. I understand that Samsung likely still needs to launch non 5G phones in other parts of the world where 5G network capabilities aren't exactly widely available 
available. But I gotta think that they would have made a better, faster, more friendly non-5G phone than this A14. That's honestly kind of frustrating to use, right? What do you guys think? Do you have either one of these A14s yourself? Let me know in the comments down below. Love to hear your thoughts, of course. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video though, or at least found it somewhat helpful. Be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys later.